You know what is so amazing about what is going on in terms of the environment is that rates have risen so incredibly fast. And I'm wondering if you think that has worked its way in terms of the pain to be felt across the real estate sector yet, or if there is another shoe to drop here as we are, uh, you know, digesting these much higher rates. Yeah, I mean, I think that, yeah, the, the market is actually kind of in shock because the rate movement has been so fast. So we went, say, a year or so ago to essentially free money at, at 2% for, for super prime buyers or borrowers uh, to now 5 and 6%. And real rates um, for mortgages are running between 5 and 6%. And, and so the monthly mortgage payments for the median household income buyer is um, up at least 100%, in some instances, about 150%. Uh, so that's putting a chill on new housing purchases. And I think that's going to go for a while because I think rates are going to continue to move. However, I think the apartment sector is a very different story. And, uh, and I think um, right now, um, I think people are just taking their breath. But as fewer people can afford to buy or they're not feeling it's a prudent decision, you'll see more people rent. So as a developer, Don, how have you changed uh, your view of, of where you invest and how you invest given the rising rate environment? How has it changed from, say, even, you know, even six months ago, the rate environment was a completely different one? Well, I think we were looking at um, for, uh, to develop in several of our projects around the country for sale projects. And we think that for sale projects that would get delivered, say, in the next two to three years will be problematic. I think five years or so out, um, that'll be a different story. And I'm talking about condominium sales. And so I think those typical condo buyers in many of the markets are now moving in uh, to rentals. I mean, you got to take Miami, for example. Miami is, it, it, for the average renter, they're going to need to spend more than 50% of their income on housing. I mean, wow. that is unsustainable. And so what has happened now is people are looking at more creative ways to how they live or um, how new housing formation, but also looking at other markets now, because, you know, success um, to a certain degree breeds more success. But at a certain point thereafter, it starts creating a place where it's very difficult for businesses to operate. And I think Miami is getting to that place right now where we're going to have to pay a lot people a lot more money in order to be able to live in Miami. And so I think other places around the Sun Belt, like Texas, um, Arizona, um, and Tennessee are going to continue to do well. Charlotte, North Carolina is a big sleeper, I believe, and I think they're going to do well on the rental side, um, very much so. Something really caught my ear, Don, in terms of what you said, and that is the for sale projects that you see, you know, that we're going to be delivered in two, three years, that could be a problem, but five years should be okay. Does that, that mean that you think that the economy is going to be in, in a tough situation for the next two to three years or so? Things won't get yes. better until five years from now? That's a long time. Uh well, I think I, mean, I started my career in 1979, and interest rates at that point were 20 percent. And the Fed was trying to control inflation with raising interest rates. And the market was so resilient that it kept going and the economy kept going. And then with these interest rates, and then you add it to that an energy crisis, there was an oil embargo by OPEC against the United States. And now what we have, of course, is uh, very rapidly increasing energy costs. So my concern is that we're in for not a soft landing, but a crash landing. Wow. And, uh, and I think that what that means is that people are going to be priced out of the housing market for quite some time. We're going to see values decline in most markets, especially the ones that have run up and that have bad fundamentals to begin with. Um, I think we'll see those markets decline very rapidly. And I wouldn't be surprised to see housing prices in some of the key markets like, say, L.A., pull back you know, 15 to 20 percent in the next 18 months. Crash landing. And that's crash landing for the economy at large not just the real estate industry? Or does the real estate industry feel it even worse? I think the real estate industry and the economy, I think the real estate industry feels it worse. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have an economy where we're not going, I mean, you're already seeing the dynamics change in terms of employer-employee relationships, and now it's an employer market in many places, and it will continue to be that way. People are, the government's going to have to stop paying people not to work. Um, that has been one of the biggest challenges. And also the housing market. Interest rates were too low for a long time. They should have moved interest. The Fed should have moved interest rates a couple years ago slowly. And, uh, and what has happened is that all these buyers were looking at it as free money because it was. And so why not buy? Now money's going to cost. And back in the 1980s, interest rates were at 9, 10, 
8%. When I bought my first home in 1987, I paid 9%, mm -hmm. um, and that was a good deal. So right. I think that once the economy adjusts to some, some uh, more higher interest rates, I think we'll see the housing market recover, but it's going to take some time.